Hey, I'd like to welcome everyone to the March 23rd, 2021 Canton Library Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, first on the agenda is the minutes. Did everyone have time to read over the minutes? Yes. Okay. Um, may I call for a motion to accept the minutes? I'll make, Diana will make a motion to accept the minutes from, sorry. I'll second it. This is Teresa. <laughs> I would like to discuss some of them. Sure. Go Thank ahead, you. Linda. All right. Let me get to the right screen. Um, oh, actually. Oh. Okay. Under fundraising, um, I think the wording might need a little changing on um, discussion regarding fundraising. It was agreed to concentrate future fundraising efforts on the new library. I think um, it wasn't, it was suggested might be better. Um, without a vote of the foundation directors, we can't really agree to that if that's all right it's a small point but yeah you can change no, okay I and, agree with you Lynn. thank you and again um the it was decided to coordinate future fundraising efforts between the foundation friends library itself to avoid conflicts um each group could schedule one fundraiser per year um I'd like the last sentence left out if possible. I think we don't really want anyone's hands tied. We will try and be cognizant of multiple fundraisers um, and try to space them out and um, coordinate them, but not um, limit them, if that's all right with others. Yep, that's fine with me. Okay, and um, maybe it was decided to work on coordinating future fundraising efforts instead of just coordinate. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Um, I'm not sure about this. Um, it was also suggested that once the plans for the library's building plans were set up, perhaps the foundation could focus their fundraising efforts solely on that. Again, it needs approval from the foundation directors. Um, it does say perhaps, so I'm okay if people want to leave it that way, but. Um, or how about um, concentrate with the approval of the foundation? Um, and then maybe it was suggested that once the building program the library building program is advancing. Uh, um, the foundation should consider focusing. Mike, yeah, I, 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 I agree. We, we need to leave it a little more fluid. It sounds very um, one direction. Okay. And we don't know what could be happening at the same time. Um, so we right. don't want to pigeonhole ourselves into any fundraising must go towards the um, building. Right. Good point, Diana. Okay. So I guess we could either. Um, okay. Let's think about some rewording. <clears throat> Just the focus. The foundation could discuss um, addressing uh, fundraising efforts towards the building plans. Does anybody have any other suggestions or? Are you all set, Linda? 
Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, what about just eliminating that line? That I consider line? that right. Um, if it's all right, we did mention something about um, the foundation might consider focusing fundraising efforts on the building project once it becomes active. That's a good idea. That sounds good. Mm. Everyone else okay with that? This is Diana, I'm okay with that. Thank you. Okay. So the foundation might consider fundraising or focusing their fundraising efforts on the building project once that becomes active. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. I, I, you know what, I, I still, I just don't like the focusing on that because we know that our focus every year is towards library programs and I don't want it to come across that we're going to give up on library programs once there's a building plan in place. Okay. Um, we say something like along with. Maybe it's better to leave it out. I don't know how people feel about that. I just removed that that bullet. Yes. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would remove it. Thank you. Okay. I feel comfortable doing that because it was just the possibility. So that was mentioned. Yeah. So I think that's fine. That's fine. Okay. <clears throat> Does anyone have any other discussion on this or any other part of the minutes? I know I'm all set. Oh, all set. Okay. All right. So um, we will have, uh, I'll take a roll call vote with accepting the minutes with the update as of March 23rd, 2021. So, Diana. Agreed. Linda? Yes. John? I know, that's right. Yes. Sorry. Sam? <laughs> Sam? And myself, Kareem? Yes. So it's unanimous. This is Teresa. Yes, too. Oh, good. I thought you disappeared. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just still listening. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, um, director support. Um, so, start with statistics. Um, you did really well with Overdrive magazines again this month. Um, those were up significantly. And again, ebooks and Hoopla are doing very well. Um, otherwise, um, pretty, pretty much the same as previous months. Um, we had talked last time about looking at um, a breakdown of adult and juvenile. So I did do a comparison. Um, we should have a separate sheet that shows um, back to FY18 um, and just some comparisons. So I did um, FY18 to 19 checkouts broken down um, by age group, um, juvenile, YA, and adult, and then FY19 to 20, and then um, a partial FY20 to FY21 since we're not finished with FY21 yet. Mm -hmm. um, so if you kind of, if you look, it's it is kind of interesting that um, adult and juvenile are pretty much the same. So there was a 17% um, increase and a 14% increase for adult and juvenile respectively from FY18 to 19. Um, then the decrease from 19 to 20 was pretty much the same, 29 and 30. And then again for the partial year of um, FY20 to so far this year FY21 again 47 to 48%. So it's pretty much the same. Um, YA though was a little bit different. So the, the original increase from 18 to 19 was 31%. Um, then they only had a 19% decrease to FY20 and then a 35% decrease for the most recent stats. So um, it doesn't look like from 
from these stats that there was really much of a difference from for juvenile versus adult, which we had kind of wondered maybe was you know juvenile dropped off more or not, but I, I don't doesn't really look like that's the case. Um, so I, I do think these numbers are very helpful. So I want to say thank you for putting them together um, because it's interesting to see that the the decrease for juvenile versus adult is about the same. Mm -hmm. um, but also interesting that the YA did not drop off as much. Right. Um, obviously didn't have as far to fall. But um, so now you don't have these numbers and you don't have to go back to do this now. I'm just curious about going forward, broken out by um, the overdrive versus actual um, physical books. Yeah, I, I can get that. We have all, you know, sales does all those stats for us because a lot of them we need for the state aid report. So they have um, all, you know, broken down going back several years. Um, okay, uh, just curious, but I appreciate Sometimes you. in the e-books though, they're not, um, they're now they're trying to label them as young, like adult, young adult, juvenile, but at some okay. point they weren't broken down really by that. It was all just, we just lumped them all as, as adult, even if they weren't. So I don't know okay. what the timing of that is, how, how far back that goes, but. Um. No, and I know there's the, the whole tumble books and all that, but I, mm -hmm. I do feel that having these numbers was um, definitely a, a good exercise to understand, you know, where we're at, especially um, with the pandemic. So mm -hmm. I appreciate the effort putting this together. Mm -hmm. No problem. Yes, thank you, Karen. Yes, thank you. Um, moving on to finances, um, we're still on track with everything. Um, then just another note, I met virtually with the finance committee on March 9th um, to go over the library's FY22 budget. Um, I did mention to them, um, you know, we talked about the, how with FY22 possible cuts uh, may be coming. So I did just remind them that the library still has not, never fully, um, was never fully restored from past cuts. Um, so I just asked if that could be taken into consideration when, um, during any FY22 budget discussions. So I just wanted to make them aware of that, um, that we were never fully restored without ours. How did they respond to that? Yeah, I mean, they, they acknowledged it. Um, you know, I don't know. I, like I said, I just asked if that could be taken into consideration when they discuss things. I know it's, it's an ongoing discussion they're having. So um, yeah, so it's just that they acknowledge that that was the case. Hmm. Um, okay, can move on to programming. On that, so, could I ask a couple questions? Sure, yeah. Um, the gas, for instance, is low on its expended amount. Mm -hmm. If come the end, towards the end of the fiscal year, um, that isn't all expended, do you have the flexibility to spend it elsewhere? Um, yes, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. And, um, It looks like the materials expenditure might be percentage-wise a little low at this point in the year. Yeah, that usually does happen because there's a lot of things in the first half of the fiscal year that are um, kind of upfront costs, um, a lump sum for various things. And then the second half of the fiscal year, it's more just the items that we're ordering. Um, and this year though, we're not, we're not gonna be held to the materials requirement for state aid because of the pandemic. So we do have a little bit of leeway there. Um, so that, you know, that's probably why it's a little bit less than, but you do want to expend the money. So it's not right back into the, right. Yeah. yeah. So it's just a matter of us, you know, yeah. ordering. Okay, good. Sure that we're ordering okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, for programming, um, back the ones in February. So we had the teen book box in February, um, as mentioned in a previous meeting, we had the mug DIY, that was a huge success. Um, we had a couple of take and make, um, we had 40 for a penguin headband craft and 41 for Valentine's Day one. And then we had eight middle schoolers attend the, um, middle, the In the Middle Book Club on the 25th of February. And the total participation in February was 168, which I think is pretty good for the few programs that we had. Um, I also did put down a couple of upcoming programs. Um, so well, so in March, March programs to date that we've had um, before this meeting, we had again a team book box, 
um, some more, um, we have the St. Patrick's Day STEM program um, and some more story time craft ones. Um, we talked about the Irish cooking program already. That was um, very, again, a huge success. And the, um, we did another Who Get at Home, the spring, um, spring wreath DIY, and that was uh, filled as well. So um, those did very well. And then upcoming, we have more, um, again, the In the Middle, In the Middle Book Club. Um, we have an Easter egg wreath, take and make. Um, and then this month coming up we're, um, in April, we're partnering with Whitman Hanson Will. So that's a group that educates the community about substance abuse. And they're gonna be doing a story time with two books by local authors. Um, that help elementary school children understand the topic. So it's geared toward those ages. Um, so that's great that we're able to partner with them. We're also partnering with Heidi's Hollow um, to do some ice cream themed programming. So we have a story walk um, with the book Gorilla Loves Vanilla coming up. Mm -hmm. And they, Heidi's was very kind enough to give us um, some gift, ca um, gift cards. So um, we, we wanna thank them for um, helping us with that. And then we have a, oh, an ice cream take and make um, at the end of the month in April. Um, the foundation had talked, I put tentative about doing another cooking workshop. So um, the spring, um, tastiest spring ever. Um, hopefully I know Linda was working on getting that set up. Um, we have a tassel program for adults and teens. And then during April vacation, um, we have a Rocket League online tournament. So it's a video game program. And then we also just scheduled a puppet story time during um, February, uh, April vacation. So um, a lot of great prog programming coming up, I think. Are there any questions about that? I just had a quick question about the middle school. Um, book mm -hmm. Do you have any um, boys that go? I think there's a couple at least. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank uh, you. And then I think the, oh, excuse me. Um, I think the programs are excellent and um, very well-rounded. And um, I was a little concerned that um, some of them were full quite a, um, maybe three weeks prior to the event. Um, maybe you could provide statistics of the wait list um, that we had to have for various programs next month and how mm -hmm. many actually attended to give us an idea. And, um, yeah, sure. We might need to focus a little more. Um, I know it's tricky. You don't want a lot of extra supplies, but um, it would be nice to be able to serve those interested at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of a balance, but um, we'll just take a look and see if we can do any better, maybe. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. Um, and, oh, um, Heidi's. Will someone be sending them a thank you letter? Yeah, but we'll definitely do that. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And we will be doing the um, cooking demo, Tastiest Spring Ever, um, on April 10th. I'll be getting out some publicity. We'll talk about that on the foundation, maybe. Okay. Um, a couple of miscellaneous things. Um, I am trying to work on getting back to doing updating library policies. Um, on a regular basis. My goal is to try to do work on three or four a year. Um, you know, sometimes that's not always possible, it might be two, but um, I would like to kind of get back to making sure that we have them, those updated um, if we need to create any new ones or update old ones. Um, so I'd, I'd like to start working on that again. Um, and then a couple things, our cultural council application. I'd like to address oh. policies if I could. Yeah, sure. A few things. Um, I actually mentioned one thing to you after the last meeting. Um, during the discussion of the um, book bundles, um, the library's privacy policy was discussed. And I felt that there wasn't a clear understanding of the library's patron privacy policy um, stated at the meeting. So um, perhaps you could share with the trustees the um, policy care? Yeah, so um, I think it, you said it was unclear last time that you know we wanna make sure that people know we're not using their, we're not looking at their history to do book bundles. Um, when we do a book bundle, we're asking the patron what they like, you know, what authors have they read? 
Um, we don't just go back without their permission and look at the history of what they've read. We actually can't, are not allowed to access the history um, unless, you know, we're required to by law or unless they, the patron gives us permission. Um, so I just want to clarify that, that we do not look at the history for the book bundles. Okay, thank you. And will a privacy policy be one of the policies you'll be working on? Yes, yeah. Good, okay. <clears throat> and then a um, couple other things on policies. Thank you for the clarification. Um, I know a number of years ago, um, I think it's important on the policies to have them in place before they're needed. Mm -hmm. um, a number of years ago, a patron complained about another patron bringing in a small dog to the library. And I believe the Board of Health was involved in the matter and a policy was written and approved on animals in the library. Um, the policy describes the circumstances under which animals can be brought into the library. Um, have you seen that around at all, Karen? Or? I haven't, no. Okay. Um, that might be something to make sure we get in place. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, I also might would like to request that you make a list of policies that you'll be updating. Yeah, I have, I'm starting to work on that already. I have a, and share yeah. the list with the trustees yeah. um, at the next meeting if possible. Yeah. Um, and maybe try and prioritize which policies you're going to be working on in, in order not to tie you into it, but just roughly mm -hmm. um, that might be helpful. Um, a couple of the can, recently, I don't know if some of you had seen around Dr. Seuss's birthday, the publisher took some his, his books out of publication mm -hmm. because they were considered racist. And um, it's possible one of our patrons would request the same thing. And before that happened, um, it would be good to have a policy in place on collection development and a procedure for reconsideration of challenged materials. Um, there was some discussion on one of the Facebook pages after the library posted something about Dr. Seuss's birthday about the appropriateness of Dr. Seuss and those mixed feelings. But um, before we need the policy, it would be good to have that in place, I think. Yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. I had shared the post of Dr. Seuss with the other Hanson site. Mm -hmm. And on one site, there was a lot of conversation. I mean, I didn't respond to their, um, but I thought, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> but I, you know, when you do share it, you get, you get mostly positive feedback, but then they know about the event because some people only go and look at the same site all the time and they don't know about anything else going on. So that was a way I figured we'd get more coverage. Oh, right. I think it's important to get coverage on multiple platforms, but um, these policies, um, if we can get some in place before they need it, it'd be advisable is my point. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, um, also wanted to mention the, we, our cultural council applications have been approved. Um, they're funding four museum passes again this year, um, and as well as a, a balloon magic show for um, summer reading. And we, last year we had gotten approved the, um, a program with the Easton Children's Museum and that had to be postponed. So we're hoping to do that this summer as well. And we're talking to, we're kind of thinking for summer reading um, that we're gonna try to hold things outside if possible um, and maybe do some virtual as well, but to kind of gear things toward um, being outside um, since we're idea. probably still limited with indoor events. Um, and then just one other matter, which I didn't have, I wasn't able to add to the um, report, um, written report. Um, you probably saw that we had to close Saturday, uh, March 20th. We had an electrical issue in the building. Um, probably about half the building um, didn't have power and the other half did. So and it was kind of random spots, it didn't work. Um, and so I had the electrician, it was gonna be really expensive to have them come on this weekend. 
So um, I figured it was better to close. And then um, they came um, Monday morning and discovered that it was actually on the pole um, by the, you know, on, by the street. So the electric company came and fixed that. So um, we were up and running before we opened Monday. Oh, that's great. Um, any questions about anything in the director's report? No, thank you. No. Okay. Um, Moving on to update on um, library services during COVID. So um, just a couple of stats. In February, we had 538 pickups and we were only open two days. So we only had 25 appointments. Um, and like just kind of go over now my thoughts of moving forward. So I had been hoping that we would get rid of um, the need for appointments that Hanson would go green um, that this past Thursday, but we actually went back from, we went from yellow to red again. Um, so I'm going to check again this Thursday and assuming we're not red, um, I'm hoping to eliminate appointments on, um, the next, the following Monday after that, cause they, they update the statuses every Thursday evening. Um, so that would be March 29th. Um, you know, we're, we're staff have been pretty, I've talked to them. We're pretty comfortable that we're not going to be, you know, inundated with people. So, um, and obviously we still would be limiting the number of people in the building. Um, to a comfortable level. Um, and then regardless of our status, I feel like April 5th is probably the furthest we would go to with, um, with appointments um, with the school, you know, they're updating everything on, on April 5th, they're changing their policies. So I feel like April 5th is probably, um, you know, good, even if, if we can't do it March 29th, then we'll do it April 5th at the latest. Um, yeah, go ahead. Um, I have more for later for when I talk about the selectmen, but one of the things from last week's meeting, um, they decided on the reopen of the plan for the town hall, mm -hmm. they want the um, want to be green for three weeks. Mm -hmm. And then if they go to yellow, then they'll reassess. Mm -hmm. So, and I think it's probably more so because they're, the hallways are narrower, there's you know, small spaces, the little offices and everything. So. Right, and they can do a lot more, a lot more stuff remotely. Um, right. So, yeah. And obviously, I mean, we're still letting people in now, so it's just mm -hmm. a matter of that they won't have to have an appointment. Um, right. like, like I said, we don't think we're, you know, we'd be inundated at, um, you know, at any given time. So, mm -hmm. um, also our quarantine right now is um, three days we're doing. Um, this, according to the state, I think there's a minimum of 24 hours. So once we do open doors, um, I'm going to move that back to two days um, to accommodate the, the 24 hour time period from this, that's recommended by the state. Um, so those are the changes I'm thinking. I also wanted to talk about um, when the board might be comfortable doing in-person meetings again. Before um, we go on to that, could I just make a comment? Um, yeah. I myself would like to not have the reopening rushed. Um, I read yesterday, I think 27 states, in spite of all the vaccinations, the numbers are higher and Hansen is back in the red. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would like you to proceed with caution and I will trust you to use your best judgment, but uh, um, request that you don't rush it at the same time. Yeah, I mean, even like even without the appointments, um, we, we the number of people in here at any given time would probably be the same as with appointments. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a matter, like I said, of the people don't have to call ahead; they can just stop by. And yep. you know, if it got to be too many people, we would just you know we wouldn't let everybody in at once. So it wouldn't really be. It would be more of like what just a uh, the procedure the patrons have to follow that would change. It wouldn't be anything um, in here that. Um, you know, in terms of numbers of people or exposure that would be really be different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. From when I've been there near a closing time, that's the time that a lot of people show up at the last minute. So mm -hmm. maybe like on a Tuesday, maybe you still say we're here till 7.30, even though you open till eight, as an example. Yeah, we're still gonna keep the half hour um, good, opening. Yeah, yeah we're I think that's, a, that. that's a good idea. Thank Give you. staff time to process. Yeah. Clean yeah. up and yeah, yeah. Um, now I noticed somewhere you do say hand sanitizer is available. I think one library put something 
that they request patrons use the sanitizer before touching materials. Mm -hmm. That's something you'd want to. Um, well, we do have a thing. We, we, we do say that, um, you know, please use the hand sanitizer. Um, I don't think we can require it, but um, we just we do ask the materials. But when they come in to please use it when you come in. Okay. Before you enter the library. Yeah. Okay. I just saw that um, it was available, I think. Sorry. All right. That's good. And all right, thank you. Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk about um, when you might be comfortable coming back to in-person meetings um, or when we could do a hybrid, but you know, most of the smaller boards um, or the one, you know, they've, they've gone back to in-person meetings. Um, you know, we could talk about this more in April, but I mean, my, what I was thinking maybe sometime by June, maybe the June meeting, um, but obviously it's, it's what everybody's comfortable with. Um, you know, we can make room in the community room so that we're six feet apart. Um, and you know, like I said, we could, if somebody doesn't feel comfortable coming in, we could have them um, on the computer um, while some of the people come into the building. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel comfortable coming in, but we, we can't make the decision for everyone, but I would like to see that by the end of June, the June meeting that we're all back together. Mm -hmm. Even like you said, we have the community room, we can spread a pot. And I think that um, I would say a good percentage of the people will have had their second vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting mine April 7th. So I know that maybe some of you, well, they op they start opening up April 19th. It's from 16 and up. So mm -hmm. Um, and the idea now, if you pre-register, then you're, you'll be calling. Mm -hmm. But then there's a lot of places that aren't on the math site list that you can also try. But I feel comfortable going back. But like I said, it's, it's an individual choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so maybe we can talk more about it at the April meeting then and kind of see yeah. where we're at then. Um, and I know the selectmen's meeting tonight, I was watching them. Um, they're at home. Mm -hmm. so one or two people might be in the, um, like John and um, Beth Sloan were in the uh, building and it looked like Matt was there as well, just mm -hmm. by where he was sitting. I thought he might be there as well. But Wes was at home, I think, um, Ken Mitchell was at home. Jim Hickey definitely was at home. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and the, um, the our legal, um, all of a sudden her name escapes me, but she was at home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so we'll kind of revisit this in April and see where we're at, but um, mm -hmm. you know, you can kind of be thinking about it maybe over the next month and seeing what you might um, be comfortable with. Sure. Um, Okay, so let's see, I guess, uh, any questions about any of that um, before we move on? No. Nope. Okay, um, so I have an um, invoice from Able Construction. They were the ones who we had um, back in February, we had um, the children carpet got wet and the um, community room closet that all need to be cleaned out, um, cleaned up. So um, the bill came to 231912. Um, so that would, I just wanted you to approve that um, if you could. So moved. I second it. Okay, roll call. Pam? Could I have discussion, yeah. just a quick oh, question? Oh, sure. Um, yeah. Where the money will come from, Karen? Um, it's gonna come from our building line. Okay. Okay, Pam? Uh, yes. Linda? Yes. Diana? Yes. Teresa? I think Teresa had to leave. I think Teresa left, yeah. John? Yes. Kareem? Yes. All in favor. Thank you. Okay. Um, so recap of meetings, Queen, um, do you want to? Yes, well, um, there's nothing on McQuan. On the PCH, I heard um, Matt said at the last uh, selectman's meeting, he mentioned um, they had said sent drafts to engineers, but I missed part of what he said. So 
but he's in a meeting tonight, so I, I might just send him a text later on during the week. But for selection, um, we had an executive session. They reminded about nominations. Papers are due this Friday. Census form is due, or people become on the inactive voters list. There's a blood drive at the police station this fr Friday. Um, and then clean up, green up time is from April 10th to the 24th. If people are interested, they contact Green Hansen. And um, then there's so many departments or uh, committees that have lots they need the volunteers for, which you would check on the town website. Then there was a lot of discussion in regards to the cannabis site on 27 in the industrial park. Um, it was so much detail, you'd really have to look at the meeting on YouTube, but um, they were talking about a courier's license where people order online and then delivery like Amazon, basically. Then the other type of license is a delivery operator's license where they pick up stuff. They order stuff, pick it up, but then they um, establish it as its own. So they then promote it, sell it and everything. Um, anything that is sold, um, sales tax, we get 3% on the sales tax. Um, but like I said, there was just so many parts to this that um, if you're really concerned or interested, then to check the um, um, YouTube. And all I do is type in Handsome Board of Selectmen and then up comes all the dates and you just click on to one. Um, the building inspector bought Curran is retiring April 29th of this year. So um, let's see the veterans office. They want to make Hanson. They brought up that they would like Hanson to be a purple hot community. And there'll be a ceremony on August 7th. You know, everyone accepted that. Memorial Day Parade looks like it's still up in the year, but most of the towns around us have canceled. The superintendent just spoke for a couple of minutes. It looks like they're looking for 2.3 million plus. Tom Hickey from South Shore Votech spoke um, and went over, you know, what he was asking for the, the town of Hanson. They went through some of the warrant articles. And then I told you about the reopen plans for the town hall. And then they want to reactivate the 2020 celebration committee because there were, if you looked at the list of events, there was like a, a major event each, each month. So I think they're looking towards the end of this year into next year on maybe bringing some of those, you know, start having them. And the 10,000 um, that was for the trees that Matt said he would um, get them, you know, put them in, get a crew to help him. Uh, it sounds like he's putting the money back towards free cash. So I was going to ask him about that, mainly because he had mentioned the library. You know, he was here the other day. Um, we were exchanging nomination papers, and I completely forgot to ask him. So anyway, the money's going back to free cash. So maybe right now is not the time to put in additional trees. And then tonight they're discussing, John Stanbrook said last week that tonight, he will discuss cuts if the override doesn't pass. So um, generally you can see the selectmen's meeting about two to three days after they've had the meeting. It's uploaded to YouTube. So that's all I have. Okay. Any questions? I will mention that I found um, the Whitman Hanson Express does a pretty good job summarizing the meetings also. They do, um, and I may have mentioned this before. Well, when I was attending, I like to watch it. I like to see the expressions on people's faces. I know when I showed my sister one of our meetings, she told me not to bob my head so much and to smile more. <laughs> so um, it's these little things you pick up and sometimes it's like reading between the lines as, as that's how I perceive it. 
So, but you do I get a lot in the paper. It's complete. <laughs> yeah, you, in the paper, you, I mean, you pretty much get the meeting. Okay, any questions about any of that? I do. Um, with the building inspector retiring, how will that affect our roof um, repair? Yeah, I was actually going to contact my, I wasn't aware that he was retiring. Um, so I'm going to have to check and see. I was going to actually contact him in the next couple of weeks um, about the siding. So um, I'll have to talk to the town administrator and see kind of what the plan is. Um, he's a procurement officer, so the town administrator. So um, he would be involved in any you know bid process for it. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll check with him. Okay, and you'll report back next month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And um, okay, am I allowed to ask if there's any update on the phone? Um, there is not. I'm I'm hoping April. Um, there's there, this month. I guess they're working on putting in the um, the what's needed at the police and fire. And then we're, we're after that, that that's all has to be put in first. So that, I think they're doing that in March and then I expect April for us. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Okay, um, foundation, Linda, did you wanna? Yes, a couple things. Um, as Karen mentioned, um, the Taste of Irish Food Festival cooking demo went very well. And um, Karen was kind enough to do up a little survey for participants to give some feedback. And I thought it was very interesting, um, some of the results. We didn't get a lot of responses, but the ones we did, I think, are helpful. Um, let me get to the right screen here. OK. I suspect some of the respondents, uh, some of the foundation directors, which is fine, um, but it was helpful to see um, the responses. How did you hear about the event? Um, Facebook, foundation, email, the express, library publication, um, Linda Wall via email, um, library website, library newsletter, Facebook, Whitman Hanson Express, word of mouth, two library newsletters, express, outreach from Hanson Library, upcoming events, foundation email. So a variety of platforms, I guess that reinforces that we should be hitting a variety of um, platforms with our publicity. So um, thank you for people who help out, Teresa on Facebook, et cetera, library and their newsletters and postings and um, it all works. Um, a couple of people said they didn't get the link, two different people. Um, but later they contacted me and I sent, it, sent them um, the res recipes. They didn't get the link or the recipes, but I sent the um, recipes to at least two people. Um, I, maybe in the future, if uh, when we do the next one, um, more than one email could be sent out with the link in the recipes. I don't know. Um, where yeah, I think what happened probably with that was it, um, I think we did two reminders because we the, uh, when we do a, um, like in order to send like an attachment like that, um, okay. we have to do it manually. So we sent out two reminders, like I think a week before and like a day or two before that we had those um, attachments with them. But if somebody signed up in between and like maybe one of them went to spam or they signed up after both of them, then they wouldn't automatically have gotten the files. Oh. Um, they would have had to like contact us or we would have had to notice that they, they signed up afterward to check the time and then emailed them out to them separately. Oh. Um, so yeah, I think, I mean, we can try to figure out going forward how better to handle that. That might be good, yes. And a um, couple of people mentioned they liked um, the option of watching it later, so that was good. Um, but um, everyone said the event met their expectations. And um, everyone said either four or five on agreeing. I am interested in attending another Simply Creative Chef Rob cooking class. Most of them were fives, a couple fours. So I thought that was very helpful information to have. Um, so I am in the process of scheduling the next class with Chef Rob. Let me see. I have a file opened on that to 
he has quite a selection on his. I liked his site on Facebook. Uh -huh. There's quite a list of dinners or you know events that he's doing. Right. Um, and you know, a couple of them sound very tasty. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, let's see. I had the image open of the um, upcoming events and lost it. Oh, here it is. Um, okay, April 10th is at three in the afternoon, tastiest spring ever. Um, does anyone want me to read the menu or not? It'll be coming out. Yeah, read it. Oh, okay. Spring fusilli, is that how you pronounce it? With asparagus and colored tomatoes, Asian orzo chicken salad with fresh vegetables and an Asian sauce, spring blueberry cheesecake galette. And that's in the afternoon on Saturday, April 10th. Then May 3rd, which is a Monday night at seven, um, there's a Cinco de Mayo, celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Spaghetti squash burrito bowl, sheet pan fajitas with lime, holy guacamole, <laughs> strawberry aqua fresca with fresh basil. So I think those sound like good um, offerings. May 3rd is town meeting night, just so you know. Oh, okay. Well, people do have the option of watching it later. Right. Yeah, which is nice. Um, Somehow it is nice if you can um, watch it live, I think, and ask questions if need be. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, but that isn't always an option with people. Um, yes. Okay, um, so that's on the survey, Chef Rob. Um, music at Camp Kwani. I've talked to the Recreation um, Commission um, administrative assistant and I believe the Recreation Commission is meeting tonight and we have a request in for reserving the lodge on August 12th Thursday um, for music seven to nine would have the lodge reserved from like 5 30 to 9 30 for a little setup and cleanup. Um, Paul I've spoken to a couple times and He's going to be checking with um, Kelsey to see if that date works for her. Um, she does go away sometimes in August, so we're waiting to hear about that, but that's in the progress. And of course, we'll um, adapt the event as needed for health guidelines. Right. So I think that's pretty much it on the foundation, unless someone has a question. I think we have plenty of tablecloths. Pardon? We I have just plenty? mentioned we have plenty of tablecloths. Oh, okay, thank you. But I will double check. Okay, those would be the round ones. Good. Okay. Um, so just a reminder that our next meeting is April 27th, 645. Um, and that's all I have. So is there anything else? Any other questions, comments? We I'm, I'm all set. Anybody else? Okay, I make a motion to adjourn this meeting uh, on Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021 at 7.34 p.m. Second. Thank you. Roll call, Linda? Yes. Pam? Yes. John? Yes. Kareem? Yes. <laughs> All in favor? Have a Aye. nice evening, everyone. Bye. You also enjoy the weather. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, lovely. Yep, beautiful weather. Have a good night.